So I live on a pretty busy street. Actually, the road noise is relentless. Especially during rush hour, and inside isn't much better than the outside. Now, I've tried a lot of solutions to try and resolve the noise issues and energy efficiency like Indos, and I'm a big proponent of them. I think they're a great product. And I've posted some videos about them in the past, too, so check those out. But I'm also a DIY kind of guy, and when I had some extra 1x2s laying around my shop, and I found a sheet of acrylic, I thought, I wonder if I can make an interior DIY storm window out of just some basic hardware store components. So that's what I'm going to try to do. My idea was to build a simple wood frame using these corrugated fasteners. It's very old school. And then take felt and wrap it around the outside of the wood frame for air sealing to help with the fit. Seems simple enough. I decided to do simple mitered corners this time rather than butt joints like I've done in videos in the past. these fasteners you simply insert the sharp end into the corrugated nail set and hammer it into place. At least that's what's supposed to happen. Let's give it a shot. Well that sucked. Okay, admittedly I should have clamped the joint, but that corrugated fastener didn't go anywhere near deep enough into the wood. And this is just cypress I'm using. I tried it a couple other times, did the same thing. I figured maybe I'll hit it without the nail set. And it just wouldn't go into the wood. New plan. So I probably should have mentioned that I own a pneumatic corrugated fastener gun. You could always use dowels or biscuits or pocket hole screws like I did in my DIY storm windows video, but I wanted to try something new for this video. Corrugated fasteners actually create a surprisingly strong joint if they're used indoors on things like cabinet doors or, hey, interior storm windows and it was just time to fill some of the gaps and move on to sanding. Before I went on to painting, I wanted to trace the outline of my interior storm window frame on the acrylic. That way I knew what size to cut later while the paint was drying. I decided to spray the finish onto these because I had access to a paint booth, but I could have just as easily brushed on the finished paint. Cutting out the acrylic, I just used a cirque saw with a 40 tooth blade. I decided to cut one inch in from the mark I had made earlier, that way the acrylic didn't run all the way to the edge of the storm.
to attach the polycarbonate, I just used some number eight, three quarter inch wood screws. They were brass. I had them sitting around the shop and I attached everything. I didn't even have to pre-drill since it's polycarbonate, not actually plexiglass. It's a little bit more resistant to impact and to cracking than plexiglass is. In retrospect, I probably should have painted them white or used a white screw just because you could see them from the outside of the house when you looked closely. My windows had nice flat stops about an inch wide that I could sit this interior storm window into. I did have a lift that needed to be removed in order to fit it, and then it was time to put the felt on. It was just simply peel and stick and put it around the perimeter of the window. To be effective at sound blocking, I really needed a good tight fit, so measuring was super important. I had to take into account all the out of squareness of the window and the thickness of the felt and everything to make sure I built my frame the right size. But if you do and you get a nice tight fit, here's what you're left with. Using a 1x2 and some quarter inch thick felt was perfect, except right at the bottom. I've left my window a little too long, but from the outside you can't even tell the storm window is there. When you get up close, you do see the screws, but now we know how to rectify that. Overall, I was super happy with how the project turned out. It's hard to tell that one window has a storm and the other one doesn't. And now with both storms in, I can sit quietly, read my book, and not be distracted anymore. At least not by outside noises. There's links in the description below to all the tools and supplies I used in this project. And if you liked it, please go ahead and subscribe and check out some of these other videos that the YouTube overlords have selected for you.